Then you be like, everybody see. You just say that to you. So you can get your audience cue by all of these things. Alright, hello guys, my name is Okeju Shai. It's good to be back here again. Thank you for watching all my videos and thank you for subscribing to my page. If you're yet to do so, kindly click on the subscribe button down there to get notification each time I upload any of my videos. I hope you guys have been enjoying all my videos and uh, if there's any request you have, kindly put it in the comment section and uh, I hope I can work on that. Sorry for not giving you your regular videos. I've been busy with some stuff. Thank you guys. All right. Today, I just want to talk about how you can do scat singing. You know, a lot of people ask me, how, what do you do? Like, how do you see that thing? You know, how do you play? And at the same time, you say what you play. I mean, what you play. Well, uh, honestly, it's not something difficult. But uh, it's something that requires consistency. I mean, it requires practice. Everything requires practice, actually. So, but this also requires a special practice. You need to uh, dedicate time to learn it. And how do you do that? Starting from your single, you know, running of your major skill or any skill that you're more familiar with, you make sure that you can see them even without playing them. For example, I this is on my E flat. So, you can see your do re mi even without playing it you must be able to say it correctly for example do re mi va sol la si do and likewise that's if your chromatic scale uh, so do re mi va do do la do si do without playing i can see the same thing do di re mi mi va di sol la do si do si la do si do do di do la si do mi va mi mo re di do so if you can identify all your tonic so far, then that's the uh, first step. Make sure you can identify all your tonic so far in your major skill or your chromatic skill. Once you're able to do that, then the next thing is you get familiar with some of your runnings. Okay, what do I mean by some of your run? Like some of your uh, uh, reefs and runs, you know, there's, there's a way we get familiar with some of the things that we do on the guitar. There's a particular running you always like to do. So as far as you like to do it, you should be able to remember. So if you want to do it, you should be able to say it together at the same time. So this is what I tell people, that when you rehearse, try and see whatever you are rehearsing. For example, let's say you are rehearsing a pentatonic and you are saying, doing, so that's what you are rehearsing. So how do you now learn this? How do you start singing with this one? How do you start with it? So you do, and you don't really need to see the tonic so far, okay? You don't really need to say ton the tonic so far. You can just look for a language that suits you best. So even when you say do 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 do, so you do la la la. So, but I I prefer you sound more like your guitar, so that it, there can be a uh, a kind of uh, agreement between them. So. Do -do 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 I don't have anything else here. I just so uh so if you learn it like if you practice like that. Every of your runnings, every of your fingering, every of your exercise, if you try to make, I mean, say it along when you are practicing, I tell you, it will go a long way. But let me give you some of the exercise that you can do let me see it, so that you can just get familiar uh, with how to scat and at the same time how to, you know, you play what you are scatting. So let's do the first one I gave to you. Do, 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 do. Pentatonic is very good for all of these things because they have it, uh, quite a, a, uh, an interesting interval between them. So it's easy to to study the interval and uh, because they are just five, so it's easy to master compared to when you are playing your chromatic or 
any other skill. So you can master it by dividing your pentatonic. Let's say you want to use this third string, A flat, okay? Okay, so we want to use. So that's the scale. So the scale from the top is So we can use it to read with sometimes we might not. So and from the third string down to the first string you can have you see, from what I'm doing now, I'm saying it and at the same time I'm playing it. So if you are not able to do that, you have to start from there. Okay. And you have to understand the pitch as well. You know, you have to understand where the note is sounding low and when the note is sounding very high. So you have to be able to differentiate between the pitch. Of course, the pitch is actually talking about uh, the highness or lowness in the sound. Uh, so if, if it's low, you have the upper string, your basic string, that's when it's low. And when it's high, you have your, you know, tiny string. So just make sure you find a suitable uh, suitable uh, uh, starting point so that you don't get too high, whereby you lost the note on the way and you don't get too low, okay? So but if it's get too low, you can just stop it and continue playing whatever you are playing. So let's go now. We want to do the pentatonic trying to start sing. So we're going to want to break it into like four sections. That's four sections. So let's start. I mean, let's try the first section. So that's the first section. So but we want to say, we want to start it now. So then let's move to this one, second one. Then then the last one. You can do anyone you want to use. It's all fine, honestly. So now let's do the four together. We are just descending. Okay. We're just descending. So then the other one, I mean, we are ascending rather. So the other one would descend later. So again. If you are making any mistake while trying to do it, make sure you slow it down to the lowest uh, or to the tempo that you know you can cope with. Because if you are not able to do it now, when it's fast, I mean, when is this slow, then if it's faster than this, you won't be able to do it. So it's better you slow it down and get familiar. Remember what I said, you have to get familiar with the notes. If you are not familiar with the notes, you will not know the net. You will not be able to predict. It's a, it's, a, it's a game of prediction, actually. You will not be able to predict the next thing if you don't know. I mean, if you are not familiar with ask you, you understand my point. So, all right, now let's go. Again. Now let's take it faster. So that's how you keep going. So now let's do the ascending. sound like your guitar so 
make sure you choose a tone that sounds like your guitar just to learn so after that you can switch to you know you can you can mix to uh, it's like someone that's speaking tongues you know <laughs> you can mix two language together you can do code mixing so you can also do uh, the language mixing whatever language you want to use do do so i'm just using that so you can mix two voices together but make sure you stay with uh practice with one voice uh so that when you are now okay when you have mastered then you can proceed to making use of as many voices as you like, as many tones as you like, okay? So now let's not do it, make use of it. Now the song is going already, so let's look for a suitable where, I mean, place where we can enter. Okay, again. One more time. You see, I'm just trying to, you know, twist it around and to make sure it fits in into the beat in different ways. If you can manage to rehearse them and say them along, I mean, some of your riffs, your runs, or your skills, if you can manage to rehearse and say them along. For example, if you want, let's say you want to play the half finish, you do. So if you can do that, you have to be able to say it. If you can't say it while playing now, like while rehearsing, don't try to, if you try to say it when you're playing, it might lead to a disaster. So try and practice it in your, you know, practice time or whatever time. So practice every of the fingering that you know that will possibly come up. So practice them before uh, you, you know, start using them during your improvisation and before start before you start doing the scatting. Okay. Okay. Well, for, for the for the half diminished you can have I can say so if I want so it's easy for me because I have practiced it before I've done it over and over again before not now but before so it's very easy for me to pick if I want to do something different that I'm not used to I don't know if I can do anything that will be strange, but that's what I'm saying. That you just have to practice it and then say it, then you now try to use it in your song, in your improvisation. And that's how you I tell you it's very, very simple and can be interesting. You know, you can use it to train your crowd. If you are a type of person that used to perform or used to minister in your various churches or assemblies, so you can actually make use of it. You know, imagine you doing then you'll be like, everybody see. You just say that to you. So you can get your audience cue by all of these things. I hope this video really helps you. Remember to subscribe to this video if it really helps you. And uh, let me check on my playlist to see all my past videos. I promise you, you're going to find some amazing videos right there that can be useful and also can help you in knowing all this about know, pentatonic. I have a video on it, how to more the five shapes of the pentatonic. So keep learning. All right. See you guys.